Welcome to Getting to Know You. Um, we started this program believing that residents, although there are 350 of us, we don't necessarily get to know people over lunch or playing games or that sort of thing. So this is interviewing people to getting to know people better. And Liz Howard has agreed to being interviewed. And, um, oh, and Betty Osan is the one who came up with the idea. Oh, um, she did? Mm -hmm. She's she's good at many ideas. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, anyway, I want to start learning more about you. And I think you go by a Navy brat or a military brat or yes. something like that brat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You don't come across as a brat. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's hear some things. I know Hawaii is a very special place for you. And let me hear some of the things that we wouldn't know unless you told us. Well, my parents met and married in Honolulu mm -hmm. in 1941, in August of 41, and my father was in the Navy and stationed on Ford Island. Mm -hmm. And when uh, the attack came, he left my mother at home and got in a launch and went across Pearl Harbor with flames and bombing and whatever to rescue his airplane. And off he went. And uh, so he was gone for several days and then he came back. And uh, so my parents, uh, they sent, the Navy sent my mother back to California to stay with her mother because they didn't want uh, the families to be in Honolulu. They didn't know whether there was going to be another attack. But my parents always wanted to go back. Mm -hmm. And so throughout my father's career, he went, he was state, he requested to be stationed in Honolulu. So uh, we went for the first time in 1951 and then stayed for three and a half years and we left. We went to California and then we came back again in 1956. And so, but between, uh, uh, from when, the time I was born until 1956, uh, I went to about 14 different schools. Mm -hmm. And one year we, I transferred four times and another year I transferred three times. So I'm used to moving into a new situation. <laughs> it teaches you how to be very flexible. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, uh, my, uh, w uh, we settled back in 1956 and my father retired from the Navy and I went to school, fortunately, for all four years of high school uh, in Honolulu and then went to New York to school and then transferred to Parsons School of Design because by that time my father had retired from the Navy and uh, started a furniture store. Mm -hmm. And there were interior designers working for him and I thought that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I transferred to Parsons and then I went home in 1962 and began my career. And what is that, 60 years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, so last year in January when I moved to Westminster, I retired. <laughs> so I, I worked practically until I drove to the airport uh -huh. and um, I had an absolutely fabulously interesting career for me and uh, was able to travel and had all kinds of variety of jobs and clients and experiences. It was really a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. And you also um, flipped houses, right? I did. I flipped eight houses, uh -huh. uh, two in Santa Fe and uh, the rest of them in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun. Um, so that's what I did on the weekend. For your spare time. In my spare time, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. And uh, so now that I've moved here and I, had, I was fortunate enough to be able to choose the elements in my apartment, now there's nothing to do. <laughs> I can't remodel and um, so I obsess about throw pillows and <laughs> little details here and there and should I move this picture or do whatever. Uh -huh. So um, it's uh, learning to let all of that go mm -hmm. and focus on a new life. Mm -hmm. And what about the travel? 
the travel, oh my gosh, my, because my parents, uh, my father, uh, we, because we moved around a lot, uh, we also traveled a lot. And um, in 1950, no, 1965, I went to Hong Kong and Japan with my parents. My father had a project uh, and he went to check on it and I was fortunate enough to be able to join them. And that, then I was hooked. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, because I'd gone to Parsons School of Design, 10 years later, I went to, I think it was a little more than 10 years, uh, I went to Parsons in Paris and spent uh, a month in Paris going to Parsons School of Design and took two classes. And one was the history of architecture of Paris. Oh, how interesting. And so every morning we met mm -hmm. uh, and we went to a different location in Paris and ha in a small group of 10, they divided the class up. And then we had a lecture about the architecture and the history of that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was four days a week, and uh, then in the after, and then we'd have lunch somewhere in Paris, mm -hmm. where we were, where we had just uh, explored, and then we went uh, took the bus. Our teacher always recommended that we take the bus and not the underground on the metro because you see more. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we take the bus back to the Louvre and went to the Musée des Arts Décoratifs and had a lecture series there about the era that we had just studied. And so we had an hour and a half lecture and then we went into those areas and actually saw the wallpaper they were talking about or the light fixtures or the rugs that they made or the other and the decorative elements and the furniture. So it was a really hands-on um, mm -hmm. experience and absolutely fabulous. And that was the first of eight trips to Paris because, of course, I was hooked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were a little sponge, it sounds oh, like. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Not that anyone in Honolulu, any of my clients, wanted anything French, uh -huh. but uh -huh. it hones your eye and uh -huh. you learn about the history of something and how a design element has developed. Mm -hmm. And so it was very useful and very fun to learn all of that background. Mm -hmm. Plus, it sounds like you would have had very interesting clients. Uh, yes, I did over the years, uh, but again, they um, didn't, uh, it wasn't because of the French background. It was, um, part of it was because of the trips I had made and the studies I'd done about Asian things. Mm. And uh, because Hawaii is mm -hmm. close to Asia and we have a large Asian population. And so um, I, I've been to Asia, uh, many countries in Asia. Uh, but my clients, the last 10 or 12 years of my career, I had a wonderful combination of uh, clients. I had a, I was working for the Marines helping to uh, remodel and restore a bachelor officer's quarters uh, for the Marines that was used as a hotel. My goodness. And um, so mm -hmm. uh, working with men mm -hmm. who, are, who have men, Marines, as their clients was uh -huh. very interesting. And then I had a client who was uh, a, a billionaire who had two houses in Honolulu and I worked for them restoring building a new house and restoring an existing house and then my third uh, demographic was moving many of my clients I think somewhere between 15 and 20 into a retirement community Hmm. Well, that was a gift to mm -hmm. me because right. it allowed me to really learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. And once I had to do that for myself, it took me four times <laughs> to downsize uh -huh. uh, into a one-bedroom apartment here at West, in Westminster. And you like it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I am so happy. This is just a wonderful gift to be mm -hmm. able to live here. And what, what attracted you? to Westminster? My brother and sister-in-law live in Sun City, 
and um, had lived there for about 12 years. So I came to the Phoenix area, Arizona area, often. And uh, when I was 74, I decided I better figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. My husband had died several years before, and I didn't just want to sit home and be pathetic. So I decided that I had to, I gave myself a year uh, between my 74th birthday and my 75th birthday. I had to find where I was going to be. Mm -hmm. And so I had to teach myself about the different kinds of retirement communities. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of configurations. Mm -hmm. uh, ones that are owned by large corporations, ones that are independent like Westminster, uh, rentals, whatever. And uh, what kinds of services. And I knew I wanted continuous care mm -hmm. because I didn't want to have to make another decision. It was hard enough to make this mm -hmm. decision and when I was less capable I didn't want to have to make another decision and so I went to several different um, places and I did a lot of research on the internet and it was easy because I was coming here to the area to visit my brother and sister-in-law and so I used Scottsdale as my petri dish if you will <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that I could uh, teach myself and then I decided, because Hawaiian Airlines flies directly from the Phoenix airport to Honolulu, mm -hmm. that this was the perfect place. Phoenix has a thriving um, cultural uh, community, lots of museums, ballet, uh, orchestra, uh, movies. I love movies. Mm -hmm. um, so it has a, a very um, ripe and uh, active cultural um, community and um, I liked the feeling when you walk into Westminster. Everyone is very friendly and uh, welcoming and um, so that it uh, at the end of the year I decided this was the best place. Mm -hmm. So then it took me a while to get emotionally ready to retire and so I put my name on the list and I waited for two and a half years, which was just perfect because that gave me the opportunity to start winding down my business mm -hmm. and to make sure that the clients I was working with, if the projects were going forward after I left, that there was someone to help them and to pick up mm -hmm. where I left off. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end of two and a half years, I was called and happened to be coming here anyway to see my brother and sister-in-law and uh, so I came in October and looked at the apartment that I'm in and I look out over the butterfly garden oh how pretty it's absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. it's a great location and it's a, a beautiful borrowed view of the <laughs> butterfly garden and so I said that's it and then I went home and started packing furiously mm -hmm. and here I am now, are there any um, backroom stories to clients and adventures and things that went wrong or you had to redo that you didn't expect? Especially, I'm thinking in terms of the Marines. <laughs> oh, the Marines were a piece of cake. Oh, were they? They were. As a matter of fact, my boss uh, was uh, here recently. And um, he has retired now and lives in Reno. And uh, so I had dinner with uh, Ray and his wife Kathleen. Uh, once, once we got into the rhythm, because I worked for him for 12 years, mm -hmm. uh, as each project came up, and he, the the Marines, in his case, he had his own money because it was a hotel. Mm -hmm. He was able to keep in his budget. He was able to keep the, those funds. And so he would tell me, we're going to do this room or this area, and here's the budget, and here's the timeline, and here's what I want to accomplish, and then come back to me in a while and tell me what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, this took over a period of time right. to establish that kind of relationship. Right. But he was very, very easy to work for. Hmm. The harder people to work for were, um, I had a client a Chinese client who came from Taiwan um, and I did a house in Honolulu for them and at Christmas time their whole family came 
it was the parent um, who was the um, boss of the family and uh, two sons and three daughters. And the oldest son I never met and I wasn't involved with, but the three daughters and the youngest son, he asked me, the father asked me to do these their five houses that they were building in Taiwan. Oh, what fun. And so that was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. uh, three, for three years, I went back and forth to Taiwan and trying to, they all wanted uh, a, a look like the Four Seasons. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they didn't really understand what that means. Mm -hmm. And yet they all wanted to have completely different houses. <laughs> they didn't want it to look al look alike, but it had to look like the Four Seasons. So I had uh -huh. to figure out a way to do that. And so I identified a color scheme that was mostly neutral with an accent that was special to this house or that house. And then I also developed a system of geometry. I picked a, a circle or a triangle or a square or a circle in a square, and I used those, that element for that house. And so the details in the ceiling or the floor or the moldings or wallpaper or whatever had to um, uh, show that particular element. Mm -hmm. So that helped me to set each one of the houses apart. Mm -hmm. But because they, they knew they wanted a Western style, but they really didn't know how to articulate that, it was very difficult to communicate with them about what I was trying to do and what they would end up with. Mm -hmm. The other thing is there's an 18 hour time difference between <laughs> Honolulu and uh, Taiwan and so I would be in the office working all day with my staff and then the phone would start ringing or the t fax would go off at about four o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon because they'd just gotten to the office. Uh -huh. So those were very long days. Uh -huh. And, uh, but how exciting mm -hmm. and how interesting. And one of the times that I went uh, to work with them, they took me to Hong Kong, and which was really interesting to go to a Chinese restaurant with, mm -hmm. I think there were eight or 10 ch members of this, these families and myself and my assistant and uh, so they would talk in Chinese and in English back and forth. And so I tried to follow them in Chinese to hear what they were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I don't speak Chinese. Um, but anyway, that was a very interesting project. And then moving people into retirement community, that was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Because people, they want, a, they're, they're going to embrace a new life, mm -hmm. but they want the things that they own and they've collected over the years are their family, part of their family, mm -hmm. their treasures. They, when they went to Italy, they bought this, or a granddaughter gave them that, or this was a wedding present or whatever. So to find a way to recreate mm -hmm. their home in a smaller space was the challenge, and that was really fun because for me, the interesting part of interior design is not imposing my ideas, mm -hmm. but having you teach me mm -hmm. how you see things. Yes, I'm thinking you're a very good listener. That's how I learn and get better, is uh -huh. if I can figure out what you like and recreate what you like. Mm -hmm. Then I'm, then they're satisfied and so am I. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to go back to those houses? see them <clears throat> the Chinese houses mm -hmm. I did um, I went with my boyfriend who was then became my husband he had done work in Taiwan and in Hong Kong and we had talked about that now I I was on a roll and I'd done these Chinese houses and so uh, perhaps he could introduce me to some of his former clients he was an architect and uh, so then I could develop some more business. But one of the things we did was we went to see the houses. And 
uh, the clients were also working with a Chinese designer who had been a school teacher and not and wasn't a really experienced designer. Uh, and so one of the rooms, my my favorite story is one of the rooms the client had asked for. We had I'd, we'd gone shopping together and they'd found um, a uh, sink and a toilet that were made out of pink marble. <laughs> and uh, the, from a company called Cheryl Wagner, which was a very famous company, and they were really quite elegant with gold fixtures and these this beautiful freestanding sink on a pedestal and a, and a toilet. And so they wanted that, but this was going to be in a guest room where they had husband and wife, men and women, and so I thought the um, pink was a little too feminine, so I found some wallpaper that had pink and yellow in it and added some yellow details and I thought that sort of neutralized mm -hmm. the pink. Well, when I went back and saw the house, the Chinese designer had not uh, put in the wallpaper but had added yellow tile, ceramic tile and had grouted the whole thing in red. <laughs> and I thought, I have to give them their houses. <laughs> and you have to do that with mm -hmm. each client is, mm -hmm. in a way, that's really wonderful to see, not the pink and yellow, but the, <laughs> uh, or pink and red, yellow and red, I should say, but to um, allow them to move into their house and then continue to personalize it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. So there were some houses that you would say, thank goodness I don't have to live there, yes. and other houses that you would have liked to have moved into. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or to say, please don't tell anyone I helped you with this house. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except that w w when I show, uh, back in the day when I show uh, people my portfolio, <clears throat> I would say to them, w what I like about this is there's no particular look Mm. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like mm -hmm. some famous designer or some famous artist or some a name brand. Mm -hmm. It looks like the people that I worked for. Mm -hmm. And that, that was always my goal. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a brother. Is that older or younger? I'm the oldest of three. My sister died about uh, uh, 11 years ago. And my brother, unfortunately, had COVID a couple of years ago. Uh, in 2020 before there were mm -hmm. vaccines and he now has long COVID and is um, has, has no cognitive ability and mm -hmm. it's very sad. Mm -hmm. So you carry the history. I carry the history, that's right. Mm -hmm. And are there nieces and nephews? No, none of us had children, mm -hmm. but uh, I was very fortunate when I was mm -hmm. married, uh, when my husband and I got married, his family adopted me. So mm -hmm. I'm an adopted mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Uh -huh. I didn't get married until I was 53, and um, I have six great-grandchildren in Honolulu that I'm going to see in about a month. Oh, how exciting. Yes, uh -huh. and a brand new great-grandson that was born this past summer and one in Honolulu and one in California. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Yeah, oh, what a gift mm -hmm. to someone with no children mm -hmm. to have this large family <laughs> yes. that uh, include me uh, mm -hmm. and call me granny. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a dream. Except you don't look like a granny. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> The white hair doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the white hair doesn't give it away. <laughs> no, no, oh, it okay. doesn't. <laughs> um, wow. I think the Rotary Club also has an interest of yours. Is that true? Oh my gosh! There's another gift. I am such a lucky person. Um, after my husband died, uh, one of my classmates from high school started nagging me about rejoining Rotary in Honolulu, and so I did. And um, I, I had been through my volunteer work before Rotary, I'd been very interested in community service projects. 
and the Honolulu Rotary, because they have quite a few international people and people who, whose business required them to travel all over the world, um, do international service projects. And three, I went on three different service projects with them, starting in 2016, and then 18 and 19. And of course, we were stopped in 2020. We were going to go to um, uh, Bali mm -hmm. in 2020, and we, of course, we couldn't go. Uh, the 2016, I went uh, to Thailand first and on my own uh, because I'd never been there before and that was a fabulous experience and then I went to Cambodia where our project was and it was in Sem Reap and um, which is near Angkor Wat and which uh, and Angkor Wat the buildings in Angkor Wat were built from 800 to 1400 and they're all stone buildings and of course there were no architects or computers mm -hmm. or, or equipment and it was all these stone uh, edifices were all built by hand. And Sem Reap, uh, because uh, Angkor Wat is now sponsored by the World uh, Historic Society, I can't remember the name of the actual organization, buildings are adopted by uh, individual countries. And so they send historians or builders or engineers or architects or whatever to work on their particular building, a library or a whatever the building is. And so Sem Reap, which is this little tiny town or city, um, which is Phnom Penh is, is Cambodia's uh, capital, but this is out in the country. And um, it's a very international city because uh, all of all these foreign people are coming and living there. So there are French restaurants and Japanese and Chinese and Cambodian and whatever. And so it's a fabulous place to be. And they have wonderful hotels and restaurants and uh, shopping and whatever. And then, uh, so we worked at a school. And uh, so our, our project was our Rotary believes that if we're going to support a project, an international project, the, the Rotary members should also have some skin in the game mm -hmm. and should go there and do some of the work. Mm -hmm. And so we were, for example, we had to lay a cement floor. So we had to dig a hole in the ground and hand mix the wow. cement mix and in the ground and then carry it in buckets to the area and lay the floor. So we had a bucket brigade and we had, you know, whatever, and it's a hundred and something degrees. And so the, the work is really hard. And, but then our bonus is we get a tour of uh, Angkor Wat, which is such a fabulous area. And so we spent two days there Mm -hmm. And the Rotary arranges everything but you're getting there and coming home. Uh, and so you, you figure out your own flights, but the rest of the time you have your, um, everything is taken care of. Mm -hmm. How did you go about decorating your own place? Here? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the, the, what I learned from uh, helping my clients is uh, you pick the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you, uh, you do a floor plan and you figure out what can go where and if you can't find a place for it, you can't bring it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, this is one of my children. <laughs> I've had this for 40 years, I can't possibly. But the good news is that's where grandchildren come in. Uh -huh. Because grandchildren are just starting their own mm -hmm. houses and my feeling is if I could give something to someone that would enjoy it mm -hmm. and it, that something would have another life, mm -hmm. then, that was, then it was okay to let it go. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, uh, so the, the idea is in, in interior design is you have to 
pick out, it has to be very simple and then you exaggerate the idea. So in the living room, because I have all these Asian things, my parents went to Asia a lot and so did I, and so I have uh, several tansu, which is a chest, and a hibachi and uh, uh, a sake sign and all this crazy stuff that I've collected over the years. And so the living room, dining room area was going to be more Asian and I was gonna feature those things. And then I had several pieces of furniture from uh, family members, grandparents and whatever. And so the bedroom was going to feature those things. So I, it sort of has two different areas and I tried not to mix them. And all I needed when I came here was a new bed, a sleep sofa, and a uh, bookcase. And the rest of it, what I had, um, uh, I had all the rest of it, and I only couldn't use about two or three pictures. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I figured, I, I mean, I worked on that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I also picked the unit that I felt would accommodate the most of my furniture. Mm -hmm. And so, because when I was here the first time, uh, Tina gave me a, of course, the brochure, and um, they, uh, with the floor plans, and because I had done that with every one of my clients that I moved into retirement communities, I did it for myself as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I picked out what my, the colors were and what elements I wanted to keep, and actually I didn't do very much in the apartment, I was very fortunate that the cabinets all worked, and I and the idea was to create a very simple background, and then let the my treasures, nobody else's treasures, but my things, be the detail of mm -hmm. the space, and have it be as simple and look as large and open as possible. But you didn't bring your signature decorating of red and yellow. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not I even in red. a corner. Huh? Not even in a corner, but I have a lot of red clothes <laughs> and I have red glasses. <laughs> well, and um, tell me about the culture of Honolulu. It's really wonderful because it's so eclectic. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many um, ethnic restaurants, Chinese and Japanese and um, uh, Thai food uh, and, and Asian uh, um, influences to most of the restaurants or a lot of the restaurants. And uh, the, the faces that you see I miss that when I go uh, mm -hmm. out and around in uh, Arizona, I don't see Asian faces. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we have, uh, we mix in Hawaiian words and Japanese words. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I went to college, I had three part-time jobs and one of them was working in the dining room. I worked all three meals. And uh, at breakfast, it was my job to collect the plates. And so I would, I would say to them, pow, which means, are you finished? Mm -hmm. And so I taught that I went to a very small women's college in New York. And so I taught them <laughs> to say pow. Mm -hmm. They were pow when they were finished with their plate and I could take it away. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and sometimes I say, well, I don't have to get involved with that. It's not my kuleana. Well, that there's a Hawaiian word that means it's not my business or it's not my problem or you know mm -hmm. that's I shouldn't interfere with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so it it's everywhere. It's in the clothes you wear. It's in the food you eat. It's in the uh, uh, the way people treat each other. Hardly anybody honks a horn, and if somebody honks a horn, you know that they're a visitor mm -hmm. and uh, not a. Uh, a person who lives there because it's very rude to mm -hmm. honk, your, honk your horn. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't a prejudice against, say, an American uh, military. None of that was. Well, the the reason that I got I went to Punahou School, which was a private school, a very large large. It's about four thousand students. 
uh, bro that's the same school that Barack Obama graduated from. That's uh -huh. our claim to fame. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the, um, uh, uh, anyway, there are other famous people, but um, the reason that, that, that Punahou want, accepted me and my brother is because we came from a military family. And so what they were looking for was a, a diversity, mm -hmm. uh, kids who had other experiences, mm -hmm. because uh, I graduated uh, more than 60 years ago from Punahou, and some of my friends still think I'm one of the new kids, <laughs> because they went to school all 12 years, uh -huh. and they even went to kindergarten before that. And so I didn't come till ninth grade, so I'm definitely one of the new kids. Mm -hmm. So breaking in new ideas, breaking in with new people. Yes. That's, that's, that's what they were nothing. looking for. Right, right. And you're very good at it. Well, that's what I learned. When, <laughs> when, you, travel around, when you travel around a lot in the military, it doesn't seem strange because everybody else is doing that too. Hmm. So it the uh, being the new kid is only for a day or maybe a week or something because then some other there's some other new kid and so you learn to make friends quickly and you're resilient and when I was in the seventh grade I went to four different schools and that's the t time when girls are trying to figure out whether they wear makeup or lipstick right. or I remember shoes and <laughs> socks that was a hard one because. The first place I went, we wore bobby socks and saddle shoes, <laughs> and the next place they wore um, uh, ballet slippers, and you know, on and on. And so things kept changing, so you have to kind of look around and see, well, how can I fit in mm -hmm. and not be too weird, but add a little something so that you bring something special to the mix. Mm -hmm. That's very, very interesting, because I think you also do that in your decorating. Oh yes, putting something of yours there, but the other people feel it's theirs. Yes, well, you try to add a little drama mm -hmm. to each interior, and whether that's the red and yellow, or um, <laughs> some other something, a fabric, or a throw pillow, or a, hang a painting in a different place, or add a piece of art. Uh, uh, some clients who were start who were starting from scratch, I was able to travel with them to San Francisco or um, Los Angeles or New York. My Chinese clients, I traveled all of those places and Paris besides. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're, you want them to learn something and you want to learn something as well so mm -hmm. that they're thrilled with their new home which looks very similar to their old home, but it has a new life to it. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you going to divide yourself with all the people you have to visit when you go back? To oh, home? well, uh, I have a. I'm laying out a calendar, mm -hmm. and I'm there for two weeks. And one of the things I do is I don't stay with anyone more than four days, mm -hmm. because by that time they're sick of me. <laughs> And uh, then, uh, so I stay with, so this time I'm moving four times. Mm -hmm. um, I'm staying with my stepson and daughter-in-law for the first few days. And uh, every year we have a, a Pisces party because uh, my stepson's daughter and daughter-in-law are Pisces and so am I. Mm -hmm. So that we have a one-shot Mm -hmm. Instead of a three deal, they they buy little uh, uh, cupcakes, so we each have our own cake. <laughs> uh, but so we have a Pisces party, and I stay with them. And then I have a friend whose husband died uh, about six months ago, and they were married for si almost sixty years. And so I want to stay with her. And then I have another friend who hasn't been out of bed for a couple of years, and. Uh, so I want to stay with her because she won't come out and so if I stay with them and then I have uh, some friends who I always end up with them because they have a guest suite that's off by itself mm -hmm. and um, fortunately I'm able to rent my the car that I sold when I left Honolulu I'm able to rent it again because uh, the, the uh, 
family that bought it uh, are on this rental program where people uh, c come and rent private mm -hmm. cars rather than go to Avis or Hertz mm -hmm. or whatever the companies are. And so um, I uh, made a deal with them and I get to, so I have my car mm -hmm. and then I get to see all my friends and I also have every year around my birthday time, I invite the women that used to work for me over the years, uh, there are eight of them who are still there and who still speak to me. And uh, so I invite them to the museum of, uh, the Honolulu Museum of Art to the cafe for lunch every year. Mm -hmm. So that's a regular that I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, then rotary meetings, I'm gonna be able to go in person to uh, two rotary meetings while I'm there. So I'll be, re and I have a doctor's appointment. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a very kind heart. Well, I, I hear a very kind and sensitive heart. When when friends are in trouble or need friends, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to lose your loved one. Mm -hmm. And um, so I want to be there for them. And it's hard when I'm here. Mm -hmm. So it will be a very tender. Filled, tender and, and F filled. And filled, indeed. Mm -hmm. hmm. Do you have any hearts in your apartment? Hearts? Mm -hmm. I have one heart. Uh, uh, a little tiny one and um, I used to have quite a collection of uh, hearts for um, Valentine's and I just got out all my eggs to start figuring out what to do about uh, that for um, Easter mm -hmm. but at Christmas I had like 10 boxes of Christmas ornaments and I got them down to one box when uh -huh. I came here and uh, so um, it's just I'm most people entertain by going to Acatillo <laughs> or to the cafe or out to lunch mm -hmm. or dinner or whatever and not to the apartment so I don't entertain very much at home although I have a, a nice sized dining room table and so and I knew that that was going to happen uh, because I'd seen my clients as mm -hmm. they moved into the retirement community so um, I just uh, pared it down as much as I could weeping the whole time <laughs> Bittersweet tears. Bittersweet, exactly. <clears throat> I understand there is a word called harmalipi in Greek, in in Greece, which means joy and sorrow together. Mm -hmm. And I thought we should have that kind of word because bittersweet is kind of harsh, whereas yes. harmalipi just yes. feels like nice <laughs> yes but joy and sorrow together joy and sorrow mm -hmm. that's right and that's I think that's very hard to learn after I lost my husband I was much more empathetic and compassionate as people experience difficulties mm -hmm. and w was able to just witness and be with them you don't uh, I thought you had to do something mm -hmm. or say something that was going mm -hmm. to be transformative. Well, forget that. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. But just being with them mm -hmm. and presence. Just your presence and allowing them to be sad and to be sad with them mm -hmm. is the gift. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my husband taught me that. Mm -hmm. He knew that. He knew that. And how did he learn it? Um, t through. Um, uh, in the Music Man, uh, the Music Man sings the sadder but wiser. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's true of all of us. The mm -hmm. older we get, the more we have experienced joy and sorrow, mm -hmm. and the more we're, if we're paying attention, the more we're able to uh, uh, share that with others mm -hmm. or share their joy and their sorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you picked Westminster. I am because too. I am so fortunate. You have, you have a lot to offer. Thank you very and much. It's, it's like a tapestry. Well, it's great to be here. I, before I came, I decided I was going to love it, and mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. And the other thing I decided was I was going to say yes to everything. <laughs> and that's really helped me a lot because uh -huh. 
I've gotten involved in lifelong learning, mm -hmm. and I've gotten involved with Lou Shaw, as you mm -hmm. know, and the jazz. I knew nothing about jazz before, uh -huh. and I'm on the activities committee. And um, the other day, I went to the um, global health mm -hmm. uh, uh, seminar, and Dr. Is it ba Beda? Mm -hmm. Dr. Beda said that when you do community international community service, be a servant. Mm -hmm. And that really touched me because mm -hmm. I think that's all of our jobs. You, you may be in a leadership position, but you have to be a servant leader. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I always felt with my clients. I was going to say, in your profession, yes, you really felt that way too. Yes. So, oh, it's just been so nice. Well, thank you. you. I'm so honored you. that you would want to speak to me. Well. I want to talk to you a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you so much, Sharon. I really appreciate it. Thank you.